Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In this tutorial, let's uh, talk about total variation filter, which is again one of the many denoising filters that are out there and uh, one of my personal favorites again as i mentioned in my previous tutorial non-local means was one of the one of the uh, favorite ones of mine and total variation is another one and uh, a couple more include median filters and so on so uh, let's uh, have a very quick look at a high level about what total variation filter is and then jump into our spider ide to write a couple of lines of code to implement this in python now, here I'm not going to show any equations like I've done in the previous one uh, because it's, it's, it cannot be explained with one or two equations, okay? But uh, let me use a couple of sentences, statements to explain this. Uh, so it, the, the, it, it works on the premise that signals with excessive spurious detail have high total variation. Okay. Again, in mathematics, there is a term called total variation. Again, you can, uh, you can look this up, but typically... Uh, uh, the assumption is the signals with excessive spurious detail, they have high total variation, which means by minimizing this total variation or reducing the total variation of the signal, removes the unwanted detail. Okay, And at the same time, it preserves important details such as the edges. So in other words, total variation filter is an amazing filter uh, that uh, denoises and also preserves the edges. Okay, so that's the summary of this. Now, if you want a lot of details about how it works and the mathematics behind it, here is the reference to the original paper by Mr. Chambol himself. Again, the, there are many variations of total variation filter, and uh, the most common one would be the Chambol uh, filter, which we'll be actually uh, coding in a minute. So this one, I think, is like a 30, 40 page document that actually goes into very detail about the, everything about total variation. So I, I'm not qualified to talk about it. So here is the reference if you want more details. I'm just going to show you how to use it and uh, in Python. So uh, this is available as part of Scikit image restoration package and uh, just import Denoise TV Shamble. I believe there are a couple other uh, available as part of total variation, but this one works so well, I, I don't even bother using the other ones. The way you use it is, of course, uh, one of the parameters, the first parameter is your image itself, right? I mean, the input NumPy array or any signal that actually uh, you would like to clean up. And the second one is weight. Okay, the greater the weight, the more denoising that happens, but you have to realize that that happens at the expense of uh, the fidelity of the input. Okay, so you have to be a bit careful. And uh, again, once you experiment with this, you'll know exactly what I mean. Now, EPS, uh, it's, it's the relative difference of the value of the cost function. Again, if you, if you are used to like uh, machine learning type of algorithms, then you know what the cost function is. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't even provide this input, okay? This is an optional input that you need to provide. And a uh, number of iterations, this is basically how many maximum number of iterations you would like to define. Again, this is also an optional parameter, so you may you can skip if you want, okay? Multi-channel equals to true or false, depending on whether you're working with color, uh, three channels uh, image, or just a grayscale image. This is it. So let's actually write these two lines of code in our spider EDE, of course, uh, in addition to importing other uh, uh, libraries. And uh, let's start by importing CV2. Not sure. In fact, uh, we probably don't need that. Uh, NumPy as NP, we probably also don't need this, but we do need this from skimage.restoration. Okay. Import. We said we are going to use denoise tv c h a m b o l l e. Okay, and uh, let's actually also look at the histogram of our image. So let's do matplotlib import pi plot as plt so we can plot the histogram and have a quick look at the image before uh, and after uh, cleaning up. Okay, so first of all, let's define our image as. Uh, uh, in fact, we should probably from SK image import IO so we can read our image and uh, I could have used CV2, but I like to again, it, uh, uh, it's better if you work with floating point numbers and uh, the way I like to do that is by while importing, converting the image as float, okay? 
image as float io dot read and my image is located under images and i call this bsc 25 sigma noisy dot jpeg and let's import this as uh, uh, sorry in cv2 you do that but here you just say as gray equals to true okay so far so good and uh, let's actually run this until this point and everything looks fine okay so now my image is imported as uh, a floating point and let's actually plot the histogram okay and i hope you know how to do that right so first let's flatten out our uh, image array which means it becomes one dimension and let's actually plot 100 bins so we can and our range equals to can you guess zero to one because this is a floating point image okay so let's go ahead and plot it and we should see our image so as you can see the image uh, seems to have a in fact if you would like to have a look at this uh, image itself let's uh, cv2 dot im show original original is our image and cv2 dot weight key zero and cv2 destroy all windows okay so this way we can have a look at our image so let me go ahead and run this and here is the image okay ideally we should have seen at least one two um maybe three and four four different peaks right here okay so we see a whole bunch of wild spikes over there and we see like one two and barely a three peak so this is not a clean histogram so if you are planning on segmenting this uh, image this can be a nightmare okay that's why we need to clean it up so let's uh, leave that plot histogram as is and let's go ahead and denoise this okay denoise image is nothing but denoise TV CHAM okay so I hope I got that right now we are denoising our image okay let's use our weight as 0 0.1 as it suggests over there and let's use our EPS as 0 0.1232 I think that's what it's suggesting and uh, let's do the same and I iter max equal to 200 and multi-channel is false in our case equals to false okay so there we have our denoise image let's go ahead and in fact let's go ahead and plot our denoise image histogram okay so let's run this line first okay it worked fine and now let's actually go ahead and plot this histogram so if you look down here you can see how nice this histogram is i see a peak number one two and maybe a peak here three four and five different peaks and five and now i can actually easily segment this image whether using histogram and watershed or using otsu and watershed and so on so now this image becomes easily segmentable using traditional image segmentation processes so let's actually have a look at our cleaned image we know that the histogram looks clean so let me go ahead and uh, this is a denoised and denoise image so let's look at the image before and after the tv cleanup so here is the original and here is the denoised image and that looks amazing okay so as you can see this actually uh, the total variation actually does a great job cleaning up images with gaussian noise and i should warn you if you have an image in fact did we have uh, an image salt and pepper let's actually open up our salt and pepper image instead of sigma okay salt and pepper image and see how effective uh, shamble is or denoising tv uh, is at cleaning up this so let's go ahead and run it now you can see this is not as effective it did it did some job over there but this is not as effective again you saw how amazing the median filter was again uh, go back and look at that tutorial but on the same image if i do uh, median filtering you see how nice the median filtering actually worked
okay this is why it's very important for you to understand the strengths and weaknesses of various denoising algorithms again the uh, the gaussian non-local means bilateral and uh, even the total variation they all work great on this random normally distributed noise but when it comes to salt and pepper nothing can beat the median filter okay so i hope you found this tutorial to be useful and again as usual i request you to subscribe to my channel as it keeps me encouraged to creating more and more of these type of videos and let's meet in the next tutorial covering a different topic thank you very much